My name is Nicole Scott, and I'm a total LG fangirl. There are a lot of phones that I could use, but LG usually makes it as my daily driver because I'm addicted to that wide-angle lens. I love Instagram and landscape photography, so wide-angle makes perfect sense when I want to try to fit everything into that square frame. But should you get the LG G7? Let's take a closer look. It's got a solid metal and glass design. One of the biggest design changes is the relocation of the power button from the back to the side. And they've also added a quick access key for AI. The display is perfect for anyone who spends a lot of time outside. The brightness boost is especially useful in direct sunlight where screens can be troublesome to read. At 1000 nits, the G7 ThinkQ screen is very easy to see anywhere. Rather than using the traditional subpixel arrangement of red, green, and blue, the G7's MLCD Plus display adds a white pixel to boost brightness without having to use more power. You might argue that a quarter of the pixels don't add anything for the picture quality, and you'd be absolutely right. But the resolution is higher than some of its competitors, and most importantly, I think it still looks nice and sharp. Yes, the G7 is yet another phone with a notch. If you're not a fan, you can always hide that area with some software. The G7 ThinkQ comes with great flagship specifications, which will remain competitive for quite a while. Sound is another strong feature on the G7 ThinkQ. We've got quad DAC, and it comes with a physical headphone jack. Woo! -hoo! It's also the first phone to have a DTS-X 3D system, which turns any headphone into a virtual 7.1 surround sound. Despite having a mono speaker on the bottom edge rather than stereo speakers, the G7 sounds better than you'd expect from a smartphone. That's because the resonance chamber is 17 times larger than the previous edition. The empty space inside the phone is sealed with water-resistant tape, which makes the whole phone a speaker cabinet. This this means that the back of the phone vibrates when it plays music, and bass is certainly better than anything else in the market. Moving on to the camera, the wide angle has been reduced to 107 degrees to completely eliminate barrel distortion on the edge of photos. It's actually taken me two weeks to publish this review because I'm torn about the camera experience. I love the wide angle. It's become an addiction. I'll forgive a lot for that wide angle lens. I just find it so much more convenient when I'm cropping photos for Instagram. And of course, not having to keep walking back to get the shot is a bonus. But I feel the photos on the G7 are a little too processed and digital. The low light photography leaves a lot to be desired as well. Moving from the Huawei P20, the difference was extremely noticeable. I want to say the camera is good enough because over the last two weeks, I have taken some great photos. LG has also added the super bright camera, which automatically turns on in low light. It uses a technique called pixel binning, which helps to get better results from the camera. But it means that you get 4 megapixel photos, but even with this, it's still outperformed by the competition. The AI cam on the G7 is a completely separate shooting mode. Unlike the P20 series, where the AI just works quietly in the background, if you're in the AI cam mode, there's a one second delay before you can take another photo. With the AI cam turned off, there are no perceptible delays when shooting in good light. Overall, image and video quality is good, and you can take phenomenal photos with the G7, but it just won't be taking the title for best camera on a smartphone. I do have to give it to LG. They did improve the selfie cam significantly. Though it wasn't hard, the selfies on the G6 were pretty unusable most of the time. Software-wise, LG has done a good job reducing the bloatware, offering a cleaner interface, and has better app design. Though I do have to admit, I have been using the Pixel Launcher for most of the last two weeks. Nothing really beats that clean UX that Google has come out with. I'm perfectly happy with the LG Launcher, but I do prefer the Pixel Launcher. When it comes to battery life, I was getting through the day, even with the Pixel Launcher running, which would use up a little bit more battery. I also stream a few hours of music a day, and of course my Fitbit is connected as well. In general, we found the G7 would get through the day with normal use. This includes taking a lot of photos, but if you're a mobile gamer, be prepared to carry around a USB power bank because you'll need that. The LG G7 ThinkQ has a lot going for it. A wide-angle camera, super bright display, a well-placed dedicated Google Assistant button, DTS-X surround, and it has an incredibly loud speaker. It's also got a notch which can be hidden, and it has extremely powerful specifications. All of these things are extremely appealing. The LG G7 ThinkQ isn't especially groundbreaking, but it's still a great phone. Whether the G7 will be outshined by its biggest rivals is questionable. It depends on what's most important to you. Good build and strong audio need to be at the top of your list, and you'd have to be okay with a good but not great camera. 
Huawei and Google have really moved the benchmark with their low light photography chops. While the super bright mode is good, it's not as great as the competition. Having said that, I'm willing to compromise a lot for the flexibility of that wide angle. The G7 is cheaper than most flagships, but the OnePlus 6 is still cheaper. The G7 has a very bright screen, water resistance, wireless charging, and surprisingly good sound from the mono speaker. The cameras are solid, but unremarkable, and again, I gotta come back to it, that wide angle lens for better landscape photography. The LG G7 ThinkQ is a great phone, and it could be the phone for you, especially if you can't get past the lack of waterproofing and wireless charging on that OnePlus 6. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, you should try to do that right now so you don't miss out on more great videos like these. I'm your host, Nicole Scott, for Mobile Geeks.